This is a walkthrough guide for assignment one, the skeletal system. You'll notice it's released on the 24th, which is this Monday, and it's in on the 7th of October. So here, the front of the brief kind of provides you the information on the criteria you're going to be assessed about. Um, so we've got the describe the structure and function of the skeletal system, describe the different classifications of joints and the range of movements available at each, explain the different classifications of joints and the range of movement at each, and then compare and contrast the different classifications of joints and the, and the range of movements available at each. So that kind of gives you an overview of the criteria, but actually you need to read inside to get a real understanding for what we're looking for. First of all, it's really important to read the scenario so you understand um, what's being asked of you and why it's being asked of you to give you context. And then you need to read the assessment type so we know it's a written text, it's a, a, um, a booklet format, and here's some of the um, requirements of your layout in terms of uh, how you format your Word document. Everything will be submitted via Turnitin, and I can show you that in a tutorial session. Then we get to the task and it tells you exactly what, what's required. So the first thing says it, it, you're going to produce a resource booklet and you'll provide the athletes with information about the skeletal system considering both structure and function. And then it gives you the breakdown of what it's looking for. So a description of the skeletal system considering the structural framework such as the axle and appendicular. So you must do the axle and appendicular. Okay, along with the different types of bones. So you must do the short, long, flat, irregular and sesamoid bones. Okay, there has to be full coverage of this, this and these. All right. To support this, you must include a diagram of the skeletal system independently labelling the major bones. The diagram needs to include the anterior and posterior view of the skeletal uh, of the skeleton together with the vertebral column. Okay, so we've done this in lesson. All the bones that we've covered in lesson, you must have full coverage of all of those. It's a diagram of the front and back. Um, and you can even include the hands and the foot like we did in the class and the vertebrae. You must say how many bones are in the vertebrae. Okay, You can, literally, if it's nice and neat, the handout, you can take a picture of it and then you can use it in your, in your booklet. And then finally, you've got to identify all the skeletal functions, such as support, protection, attachment site or attachment of skeletal muscle and leverage, blood production, storage of minerals and bone growth, and each must be described in detail. If you do that, that's P1, and I'll show you an example of P1 right now. So here's P1. Um, you can see that the skeletal system is labelled up, anterior and posterior, and also we can see that the vertebrae has been labelled up as well in terms of the number of bones each. If you do get um, images off off the internet, you can't use labelled images. You have to use a image that's unlabeled, and then it must be labelled by yourself. Okay. Then, if we look down here, we've got um, we've got here the the axle of the the skeleton um, and the appendicular of the skeleton. We've got some detailed descriptions of both of these um, of the skeleton. Again, we've got an image from uh, Google, I believe here. Um, which is referenced. Okay, so this is the axle and this is the appendicular. And then as we move on, we've got long, short, flat, irregular bones, and they're described in detail. And there are also um, specific examples of them where you'd find them, but exa examples of how they could be used in a sporting context. Then we move on to the functions. So each function is is described in detail so we've got support protection attachment site and leverage you can link them together if you wish to do so uh, blood production storage of minerals and bone growth okay and that there is p1 complete so let's have a look at p2 now all right so p2 is identifying the three different classifications of joints so we've covered those before it's the uh, fibrous cartilaginous and synovial Okay, um, and then you must, if you want to move into merit, you explain them. So you each providing examples and illustrating the relevance to sport and performance. Okay, um, and then if you want to go into distinction, and we'll talk about this a little bit in a little bit more detail in a minute, you've got to compare and contrast different joints and use a range of sporting examples to support that. So let's go back to what the work as we move into p2 what we've done here is we've just just we started to describe but also gone on to explain a fixed joint okay we've done the same with what's known here as a slightly movable but actually we should be calling it the cartilaginous joint okay which has been used here 
And then we move on to a synovial joint um, and we, we describe and explain the structure of a synovial joint as well as linking some specific sporting examples along the way. Okay, um, so here we've got fixed synovial and um, cartilaginous joints in sporting examples. We then must um, describe each or each of the movements that we've covered in lesson. Okay, so each of these movements here: flexion, extension, hyperextension, abdu abduction, adduction, rotation, circumduction, plantar flexion, dorsiflexion, elevation, depression, supination, pronation. Um, those those movements must be described in detail. Okay, and let's give us specific examples of of what they are. And how that's carried out. Once we've done that, um, we're going to move through. And what I'd like to see, actually, and it hasn't been done in this one, is that um, for each synovial joint, I would like you to describe and explain those synovial joints. So for a ball and socket, describe and explain it and give it an example. Hinge, pivot, saddle, condyloid, gliding. I'd like them to be described and explained in detail. As we move down here, we kind of see... Um, some some compare and contrast elements here so this is distinction and i'll give you an example here so in a fixed joint there's no movement so there's no flexion extension abduction etc in a slightly slightly movable joint there is minimal movement so that she's starting to con, uh, compare and contrast so there is there is some movement but but not a lot um, the vertebrae rotate slowly and she's given examples here um, however the ribs connect to the sternum the main movement occurring in uh, is mi minimal flexion and extension. This happens as you breathe and the rib cage expands and contracts with your lungs. In a synovial joint, there's a wide range of movement and then there's specific examples of where that movement happens. And then here we've gone into some specific sporting examples to support what they're saying. So in gym, in a gymnast, you would use a synovial joint as a lot of movement is involved. When you raise your arms, you do a, um, do a back handspring extent. <coughs> Extension and often hyperextension are being used when you bend backwards during the handspring and land your hands. Slightly movable joints are being used. This is because when you bend your back, the vertebrae um, are helping carry out the movement. And when you land on your hands um, and the back of, of your feet, and then the back on, on your feet, back on your feet, the joints in both the, your carpus and tarsus are, are working to stabilise and help you land. What I would expect as well is to, to compare and contrast. So here we've got some comparison and um, some comparison, and we've got some sort of differences highlighted. But actually, you know, why is why is a, um, a hinge joint more appropriate for certain actions than a ball and socket joint and what's the difference between those two joints and where are they used in sporting examples okay so this is a pretty good one um, but I think there's an opportunity to to elaborate on this and to build on this and move forward for it this is just an example to give you an understanding of the level of work that's required please look through it watch this video at your own pace you can stop pause it at various different intervals and go back and check to see whether you're on the right lines good luck